without a doubt, the, the jointed swim bait, the glide bait, you know, started out, I would say, in, in California. A lot of the Southern California guys, they, they were making them out of the garages, you know, and, and up in Northern California on Clear Lake especially. Clear Lake has a forage in the lake um, known as a Clear Lake hitch. And it looks like a skinny carp is what it looks like. Um, I know those guys from Southern California sent a bunch of those glide baits, eight, nine, 10, 11 inch glide baits up to, to Clear Lake. And all of a sudden we started seeing 40 pound bags out of there, you know, in, in, in April, which is in my opinion, is the best time to throw a larger profile glide bait. And basically the glide bait is just a, a very large bait fish profile. Most of the time it represents a trout or down south, a gizzard shad or, you know, Northern California, the hitch. It's got one joint in the center of it. The biggest thing with glide baits, what makes a good glide bait um, so effective is having absolute balance. And what I mean by that is when you're letting it glide through the water, uh, using your reel from left to right, left to right, and when you kill it, uh, the glide bait can't fold over and fall down on its side. I mean, that is just not natural. So when it's completely balanced, it falls belly down, back up, and it's just a beautiful, nice, slow, balanced fall. But the presentation is real simple. I mean, I, I just look for points anywhere I know fish are living, especially in the springtime around these reeds or in the fall around these reeds, bass are shallow. You know, with glide baits, you know, a lot of guys are talking about, you know, twitching it and smack, you know, and, and jerking it hard to where it, you know, turns around on itself and looks at the predator that's chasing it. and. That's kind of a misconception in my opinion. I mean, I've been throwing glide baits for a while now, and I'll tell you the best cadence, uh, the best presentation you could give is just a nice glide from left to right, left to right. And that's what drives those big fish nuts. I mean, if you think about it, um, how many trout have you seen or how many big gizzard shad or how many big bait fish have you seen uh, being chased by an eight pounder and then just sits there and turns around and looks at it. That never happens. So, you know, those big bait fish like those gizzard shad, those trout, um, they just have a nice long stride and they're just trying to get away and get away and get away. And that's what triggers those bites is that real long stride. So without using my rod tip, I'll just use my reel half a half a turn at a time and just let that thing stride from left to right. The cadence is just a real simple right, left, right, left, right, left. And every time it does that, it flashes and turns and just real subtly turns left to right and you'll get a lot of followers on it. Glide baits have just a crazy good drawing power. Fish see it from a long ways away. It's a real natural presentation. It doesn't have a boot tail or a wag tail like most of the you know plastic swim baits have. It's a straight tail. It's just a real super natural type presentation that the, it just drives the big ones nuts. This iSlide 185 is just a perfect size for, for myself as a tournament angler. Like I said, a lot of three pounders bite this bait. Um, you've got the iSlide 262, which is 10 inches long. You know, all the trophy hunters down in California, all my buddies down there love that bait. But it's just a different presentation to give those fish. Unlike a plastic swim bait, soft plastic swim bait, there's less vibration there. It's just a really good visual presence uh, that's really appealing to five plus pound fish. You know, and a lot of times during tournaments, if I'm sitting on four fish or if I'm sitting on five fish and I'm just looking for one kicker bite and I got an hour left, a lot of times I'll pick up these glide baits and just, you know, work a Thule line like this, work a reed line or a, a long extending point, And it only takes one bite to set you apart from the crowd. And glide baits are a perfect way to do that. Because it's such a slow moving bait, just glides left to right. It's such a slow moving bait. And a lot of times I'll use it uh, in water clarities from, you know, 12, 20 foot visibility, all the way down to three or four foot visibility, the fish may get a good look at it. So the, the higher the detail, the more lifelike that, that glide bait appears, the better off I am. I wanna entice as many fish as possible to come up, follow this thing, and then I need it, I need it to commit. And a lot of times just having that glide from left to right, what being well balanced and well detailed, that's what makes that thing uh, convinced that that big bait fish is real. These glide baits, you know, you, you need a, what's really important is, is having a good quality line. The standard for me is a, is a 20 pound Seaguar Invisex. It's a fluorocarbon line, which is minimal stretch. It disappears in the water real nice and it also sinks. So it helps that bait kind of suspend there and kind of stays there. Rod selection, very, very key. Since we've got treble hooks on these glide baits, we're gonna wanna use a moderate action rod, uh, a long moderate action rod. I like the Orochi XX Leviathan. It's a, like a 10 power, it's a F10 
8-0, which is an eight foot rod. And this rod, it's got a nice kind of medium to medium long handle, allows me to cast that glide bait real far. But the moderate action is absolutely key. When we're dealing with, uh, you know, size one, size one aught treble hooks, and that big giant eight pounder eats that bait, you want a real soft rod, almost like a large, like an oversized cranking rod. And this moderate action swim bait rod, it'll bend to about right here. And basically when that fish eats it, you get a lot of shock absorption with this rod. And all I do when a fish crushes it, I just sweep back, load the rod up, and those treble hooks are pinned, they're not going anywhere you land that fish almost 100% of the time. Man, once that fish eats it, I just start winding. That's a strong 20 pound fluorocarbon line, 300 size reel, uh, a lot of line capacity. When, he, when she eats it, I mean, I'm just cranking her all the way back to the boat. A lot of times I'll use that momentum, boat flip them in the boat, she's counted, she's ready to go, and I'm doing well in that tournament.